What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Hey, do you nerd? Oh my god! You nerd for Tremendicon! I totally nerd I nerd for Tremendicon. I got the shirt! You got the shirt! You totally nerd for I, this. I tremendously nerd for Tremendicon. Ha! This is Tom and Lizzie, collecting all the things, searching from here to there, finding Comic book tables, house Legos, and action figures, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints. Watch as they collect them all. Tom Lacey collecting right now. Okay, to be fair, probably not a lot of you nerd for Tremendicon seeing as how it is a brand new convention, and this was their first year, but that's why we're doing videos to kind of show it off and support them. And now it's time to talk about some pickups because we found some really fun stuff at totally Tremendicon. Did. Now, first of all, I would like to point out that something that's really cool about Tremendicon is how the focus is really to put the spotlight on creators. Mm -hmm. Now, this speaks volumes to us because this is something that we like to do. This is why we do event coverage videos. This is why we go to Ren Fairs because we like to show this stuff off and really spotlight the events as well as the people there. So we'd like to take time out and talk to some of them if they're willing to talk to a camera and have them tell us a little about the stuff that they make, where best to find them online. I can't do it. I'm camera shy. Tremendicon was so much fun and they really do put their values right there on their sleeve. They've got great education, inspiration, encouragement, collaboration, and charity. They are non profit at this convention. In fact, the money goes to the Ozarks Food Harvest to feed the hungry. So not only are you spotlighting creators, not only are you encouraging more creators, but you're also doing a great charity. This is a tremendous convention. <laughs> you're, done. you're done with the oh, puns. Okay, okay. Let's talk about some of these pickups. So first of all, as we mentioned, yeah, hey, you gotta rock the merch. And the first thing that drew your interest in Tremendicon was 100% the logo. 100% the logo. I, the minute I saw that logo and uh, they brought this convention to our attention, I said, I need a shirt. I need a shirt. So yeah, totally in love with the logo. They were also super kind as to hook us up with some press passes. So we were able to get in there and look very official as we tried to talk to people, <laughs> even though we are totally not official at all. Uh, I mean, we're just as awkward as the next people, <laughs> but thank you guys so much for inviting us to do this. And we hope that, uh, you know, we, we did all right with the video showing off how tremendous this convention was. I know I'm looking forward to next year tremendously. This should be a drinking game. How many times are we going to make? Okay. Bing! Bing! <laughs> so at their table, they had some little notebooks. Yeah, this was a great idea. These were free. All they did was just get some really inexpensive notebooks, stick their sticker on the front of it. If you find a new uh, creator, you can write down where to find them at. You can write down your notes um, when you go to one of the panels on how to do things. Hey, if you don't want to do that, you could just uh, do autographs. You know, in case you True. see Tom and Lady Lacey of Do You Nerd. I don't even know who you are. You, you know, ask us to hold something we while you get someone's autograph. What they really want is the barrel's autograph. <laughs> that's, that's true. Just get the wheel to roll over <laughs> in like on roll, the page. <laughs> well, speaking of the book, of course, they had a fantastic program a guide. informative uh, guide. Again, they've got a map. They've got all the events listed in here. There's information about the charity for the Ozarks Food Harvest. There's also all the information you would need for all the spotlight creators on hand. The thing that I really liked about this is they split everything up. So you didn't have to go through and like scan an entire list for Friday or an entire list for Saturday. Each section was broken down into these are the writers, these are the comic books, these are the cre the um, content creators or stuff like that. So if you were like, I want to just see gaming panels, then you go to the gaming page and then there's the list of all the gaming panels and their time. So I thought that was really clever. Yeah, actually a uh, good point. That's a, that's a real yeah. good touch. Little things like that that you don't often think about, but a quality of life thing yeah. that makes it that much easier yep. if you're there for just one thing. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Hey guys, that was a tremendous, okay. <laughs> right. What are we up to, 25? I know, I know, I'll stop. Can you stop? Can we, can we not do this? It's always great whenever there is someone at a convention mm -hmm. and they have snacks. 
far out treats. We got to talk to them and these are delicious. Yeah, it was really neat. They um, take a bunch of different kind of treats and freeze dried them. You think, oh, what's a freeze dried treat taste like? It's different, but it still mm -hmm. tastes like that treat. Like she was sampling uh, Skittles and you and I do not like Skittles really. Because of the texture, yeah. how they get like caught in yeah. your teeth. So it was soft and chewy, but then at the end it tasted like a Skittle. So you still have the treat flavor there, but the texture was all completely different. And that's what was so fun about it. Well, she did a bunch of things. She did watermelon cookie dough. She did milk duds, which again, I was like, all right, I love milk duds. So these were weird because they kind of disintegrate in your mouth when you eat them. Oof, it's gone. But then at the end, they're a little chewy and then you get that milk dud flavor. If you've ever had a milk dud, think of that almost firm yeah. caramel texture. Yeah. And this is the complete opposite. This is almost like a cheese puff texture. You, you put it in yeah. your mouth and it pretty much, as you said, disintegrates. And it's strange because that milk dud flavor is there. Yeah. And then we also got a giant Rice Krispie treat. That didn't last till this. It did Sorry, not guys. last to this. No, we ate it already and we forgot to get a picture of it, but amazing. We also got some of these for your dad. We did for Father's, for Father's Day. Day. He loved them. Good. And he would not share. Uh, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure he didn't <laughs> share with anybody. You know, in my younger years, I'd share. Oh, you're not going to share. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. I mean, something you love to adorn yourself with whenever we go to events are buttons. buttons. So we got some fun stuff, some really nice stuff actually yeah. from Attack the Wagon and we had a chance to talk to them. So please check out the floor tour video to see us in action playing some of their arcade games. Although we didn't win any money for any high scores. Yeah. All right, we saw a familiar face that we have seen at quite a few different conventions. We've seen them at the Joplin Toy Fest and, and some of the other conventions that we've gone to. And I at the Joplin Toy Fest we went to, I regretted not picking up the little twink that they that she had there. And so when I saw her at this convention, I immediately said, do you still have the twink? And she said, yes. <laughs> I got my twink. <laughs> I got it. So now I don't have to regret it. So basically now the only thing I'm missing from my childhood set I had is Rainbow Bright. The condition of this looks to be this great. This is amazing condition. It's there's like hardly any scuffing on the on the face and there was always that weird plastic face and then the fur is still yellow and not matted it's in i mean it is in amazing condition everything is clean the shoes are clean the hands are clean this toy was probably just set on a bed or on a shelf but it's in a good home now nice i'm glad that you got the twink with the fur no boots with the fur another really great creator that we got to talk to was the creator of Gobs Hollow. So again, please check out that floor tour video and he's going to give you the whole rundown of this. But how can you resist? First of all, a little bit of a Ozark love right yes, here because very much so. you know, he's talking about cryptids hanging out here in the flyover state. I mean, if you're going to be a monster and you got to hide out somewhere to take a vacation, you don't want hide, the yeah. paparazzi bothering you. This is the perfect place to do it. So we got a comic and look at how unique these characters are in here. And speaking of unique, he had jointed figures. Now, we're the kind of kids that grew up with the great Halloween <laughs> decorations that you put up on the door the like witch the skeleton. The skeleton yeah, yeah. And, and they were those jointed figures mm -hmm. and that's why I had yep. to go for this. I mean, it totally took me back. And you don't see stuff like this, uh -uh. so it's super unique. It's going to be so much fun to go through and this. And I just like the name Gobs Hollow. It's kind of fun. Oh, oh that's perfect. It's yeah. spot on. Yep. I did not pick this up there. I already had it, but I was super excited to know because it was the first time we were going to run into Cullen Bunn uh, basically since Graveyard Slaughter has come out. And so I definitely wanted to get Cullen's signature and a couple of the other creators was there. Adam McLaughlin was there. Gary Bedell was there, but I could never track him down. Yeah, yeah. He, he was running all over he the was place. Sneaking so. all over. We ran into him at all the times when we didn't have this exactly. ready to be signed. Yeah, so I've got you on my radar, dude. And I'm gonna try to get everybody else's signature who was involved in this, but I was excited to get at least two of the signatures on here. And I think I'm, I disappointed Cullen a little bit. Yes. Because normally when we run into him, I have a stack of comics for him to, to uh, sign. And I told him, I said, I've only got one this time. And he goes, what? So just the one. So Gary is here. 
sign it. Yeah, I'll have Adam's to. Adam's here. To okay, good. I'll have to get them to sign it too. You're slacking. I was like, yeah. Well, I ran out of time to prepare. So I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. That he remembers he you remember as the woman who brings a stack of comics. <laughs> Although. You know, Ellen, you kind of brought this on yourself. You write so many comics. You do. What, you write so you many expect? comics and so many good ones, too. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah. So if you guys have not checked out Graveyard Slaughter, check it out. Keep an eye out for Colin and everybody else. And uh, bug them to sign some stuff for you. By the way, in the uh, tour video, Colin mentioned a 20-minute horror film. Ooh, so, you know, true. if you're a horror yeah. fan, boom, you got your comic. You got an indie movie. It's on YouTube right now. It's like a 20 minute horror movie. Yeah, you need to check it out. We will. I know that mask is amazing. This is from the movie. Yeah. Well, this next pickup is a little bit bittersweet. Uh, I went ahead and grabbed a couple of comics, and this is artwork by David Font. Now, he was a local comic and pinup artist, and he does amazing stuff. We've actually had the pleasure of running into him at multiple conventions mm -hmm. and even free comic book day. Yeah. In fact, there was one that poor Lady Lacey couldn't yeah, attend, had to work. but I had her in mind, and he was kind enough to draw a sketch of Silk, yes, one of did. your favorite Marvel yes, characters, I believe. he did an amazing job on it, and it's been on the fridge ever since he drew it for Absolutely, me. always <laughs> front and center. Well, we had to pick these up because unfortunately, we lost David in April of 2022 to cancer, and that sucks because I mean you know he was one of our con friends he again an amazing artist always doing great stuff they actually had a calendar and it's from 2018 but I couldn't resist this either because I mean it's just more of his art so yeah yeah I don't care that it's an outdated <laughs> calendar it doesn't matter because it's so much fun pinup art pieces in here and again, all the more reason to, you know, support your local talent, but also, uh, you know, support your friends. When we were at Vision Con, we got to see the not Mimic boxes, mm -hmm. and I guess he got a lot of flack for it, so this time <laughs> he brought the Mimic boxes. And so I picked me up a wonderful, lovely little Mimic box. I'm so glad he did make these because look how awesome I this know. is. One thing that really drew my eye to it was the fact that it's on the side. I really like the fact that the side is cut out so you can still see the teeth. Um, everything on it is really great. There's hardly um, any glue or wood like nails or anything like that in it. Basically, he tried to make this box where everything kind of fits together. It's all tongue and groove and everything like that. So it's really great and just really great quality. So I'm super excited about my Mimic box. You know, for a Mimic box too, there's so much expression in his face. I mean, he's a very angry mm -hmm. looking Mimic box. He is. And I love even the detail on the top with the kind of broken wood up there. Is that where your bad dice are gonna go? Bad dice Instead are gonna of go dice jail? Yep. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Look at it. Weirdly untouched in this room filled with looted chests. I bet it's got a sword in it. You could give it a cool name like Stingray or like Fin Fin Findel. You're a lucky guy. I wish I was you. Well, if you watched our Vision Con video and our Jesse Teller promo, he strikes again. Yep. We're not just buying books about goat songs. Oh no. We went with the trilogy, the Manhunter trilogy right here. Now, he has a great collected piece that he said even has some additional content in it. But I'm not going to lie, we both of us. We love the artwork on the cover of these oh, books. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Such vibrant covers mm -hmm. and the quality of it. Like, there's almost a, a kind of a velvety yeah, texture to them. It's a great texture and everything like that. Also, he was kind enough to sign all of the books. He did. So that was very sweet. And he signed each one differently, too, which was kind of fun. And speaking of sweet, as his way of saying thank you for the promo piece that we had done, he gave us a free book, The Seeds of Revenge, a novella, and he signed this as well. And seriously, this means so much to us. I mean, you absolutely did not have to do this. No. Obviously, we're more than happy to buy your books, <laughs> but uh, we really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. But yeah, definitely. If you guys get a chance to check out Jesse Teller's books, um, he's got several different lines going. They are awesome. That's where I got the word tremendous from. Everything in this kid's life, you, he'd say tremendous. I tell you what, we are in a lot of trouble we seeing are. some of the same people at conventions. Because it just means I didn't pick it up last time, so I picked it up this time. Yeah, and we then saw, maybe next time we see you, I'll pick up some more. We saw some pretty cool art at Vision Con. We brought home some prints, but that wasn't enough because we brought home more prints. Well, but he didn't have, he ran out of this one at Vision Con, so I couldn't even get it at Vision Con. So I was super excited to get this because I liked 
this one because it's an animal print. It's different from the other prints that he even does. Oh man, so, his style. It's just awesome. I mean, there's so much expression in the sea turtle's face and it's just, I don't know, it's just so cool looking. And then I picked up the octopus because I do love octopus. Hi. Oh, uh, you post? seriously? No, not the girl <laughs> who's bought a couple of teacups full of I octopus know, creatures. Who knows? <laughs> I actually didn't see this one at Vision Con, so I don't know if he hadn't done it yet or whatever. At Vision Con, there was only the jellyfish and the sea turtles, so when I saw this, I was like, ah, yeah, have to get this one. So again, this is another one of his flip pictures, and they're just amazing. The expression on these turtles, it's the good classic turtle the way it's supposed to look not the weird way they look now <laughs> so i absolutely love it and i definitely did want them opposite so you've got the purple and the blue on different opposite sides the red and the orange on different sides so um very excited to have these these are great pieces i'm so. a leo guy so leo goes up top yeah, just we definitely saying. made sure leo was on top <laughs> oh how cute You've been back for five minutes and now you're schooling us on your master plan. Okay, and the last thing, a booth that we probably returned to like 50 times. And I spent a long time at it too. So if you remember from Vision Con, our favorite little uh, miniature artist guy, Adam McLaughlin, was there again. I was super excited to see him there because what did I say to you when I first saw his booth? Uh, you had some warrior penguins that you needed to yeah, pick up. Yeah, if you remember in the Vision Con <laughs> video, I, ex I described the warrior penguins to you and regretted not picking any of them up. So of course, I was going to pick up these friggin' warrior penguins that just, you know, have, they just picked things up off the street or the ground or wherever and just lashed it to them with chains and whatnot. Like this one, he's just found himself some big old horns that he glued to his helmet. He's got this big giant horned beast head strapped to his back. And then this other one that I picked up has the same monster's giant hand strapped to his head. And then he's got an alligator uh, skull on his spear. And then this really cool little shield with the skull and crossbones on it. I mean, they're just really cool, intense, fierce penguins. <laughs> now, I think there was one more detail about that shield as well, wasn't there? Yeah, um, Adam actually was telling me he had found a walnut shell and he just picked it up and painted it and stuck it on him. So it's a cute little walnut shell. And the problem was I was only going to get one. But I couldn't decide between the cool giant monster hand or the monster head. So he cut me a deal, so I got both. <laughs> and then the one last thing that I did pick up was he had an ocean line this time that he didn't have last time. And there was just this really neat, like, hammerhead shark man, I guess. Um, but it was just really cool. He painted it to look like a whale shark. And I mean, there's just the detail in the coral and the detail on the the monster man himself. I mean, it is just amazing. It looks like it would literally just come to life right now in your hand. And that's the one thing I love about Adam's miniatures. And I mean, the name is also really cool. Stranger Thingies. It's just, <laughs> it's just adorable. So I am loving these and I plan to get lots more of them. In fact, there was one that I saw on the way out that were all sold out so I couldn't even get any. And I've told him, and I'm telling you again, Adam, I want the banana dogs. Oh my gosh, those <laughs> banana creatures were the fantastic. banana tree. It was really cool. There was this portal that he had, and these banana creatures, and they're literally a banana, and all they had was little arms and legs sticking out of them. They were coming through the portal, and they were fighting these mushroom creatures. And I guess someone had come along at the beginning of the convention and bought the entire set. So he left them out there for display, but you couldn't buy any. And there was these little banana dogs. There were little dogs running around the man of bananas. And I was like, I need a banana dog. <laughs> so you got a shark man, you got some undersea creature prints. You very much had an oceanic affinity I did, going on. Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize that, but I did. Under the sea, under the sea. All right, well, there you have it, nerdlings. Hey, thank you so much for checking out our pickup video. But more importantly, please check out that floor tour video so you can really get a feel of Tremendicon, plus so you can hear from some really awesome creators there. And if for any reason you do happen to be local and next year want to check out Tremendicon, we would love to see you guys there. So leave those comments down below on any of the fantastic stuff 
we picked up. Hey, let us know what you've been reading lately. Let us know what kind of art prints you love. Let us know what kind of comics you love or, or your penguins you happen to love. And uh, maybe there's a banana dog in your future as well. <laughs> Actually, speaking of banana dogs, I'm not going to spoil it here, but we were talking about like we uh, a we food, came, we like came an up actual a banana fair dog. food. Fair, fair so, food. Uh, you know, patent pending, but uh, that may be in the future. Uh, anyway, leave those comments down below. Give the video a like if you happen to like it. Don't forget the notification bell. And also don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise over there. Hit us up over there on that lovely Retro Refresh website. And if we like it, nerdlings. We nerd it. What I also nerd for? Alien eggs. These Ooh. things are amazing. Yeah. These things are almost gone. You know what these are? They're tremendously good. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. I couldn't resist, mate. Ow. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead because I'm just gonna do voiceover for it. Popeye. It's <laughs> because I knew that Colin Bunn was gonna be in there. Comic. It's just comic, Tom. <laughs> I seriously want to make a, a banana dog.